Good day, everyone, and welcome to our third Sunday in November for our time of worship and celebration of the good news of Jesus Christ and in our week in which we will prepare for Thanksgiving. As we gather this day, I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Let us share it together. Come, everyone, clap your hands for joy. Shout to God with joyful praise. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great King of all the earth. He subdues the nations before us, putting our enemies beneath our feet. From Psalm 47. As we gather this day, we gather with a word of welcome, a word of well-being, a word of peace. It is the Hebrew word that Jesus spoke at the resurrection, Shalom. Peace, welcome, well-being on our journey this day and this coming week to Thanksgiving. I invite you now to share with me across the airwaves the shalom. Shalom in Christ, shalom. And that shalom, we remember that Jesus is the light of the world. The light that brings us and assures us welcome, well-being, and peace. And may that shalom be yours this day and every day. Amen. As we gather this day, we lift up our hearts and minds and spirit in prayer our prayer preparation for our time together. I invite you now to share with me our prayer preparation for this day. Let us pray together. Come, everyone, hear our prayer. God is our refuge and strength. At this moment, we bow our heads and give our all to you. Strengthen us to do your will. Surround us with your mercy and benevolence. Breathe on us so that we may inhale your spirit. Allow that breath to make us leaders among our people. Allow that breath to empower us to be fearless to do your will. Hear our prayer, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our scripture lesson for this Sunday is from the Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter, 27th verse. I'm sure you are all familiar with it. 
Jesus said this, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. May God add blessings to the reading of his word this day, and bring those who hear this word and transform the written and spoken word into the living word in their hearts and minds and spirits now and ever. Amen. Yesterday was November 11th. For many people, it's the number five day, like we have 9-11 for the great tragedy that occurred uh, at the World Trade Centers. But 11-11-11 was the official end of the First World War. It was originally called a holiday, as we will be observing this Monday, Armistice Day. On the 11th hour, on the 11th day of the 11th month, the guns went silent on the Western Front in Europe to mark the armistice, begin the peace. And it was a reminder for many years for many of those folks a time of peace and hopefully the end of war. Tragically, it was not the case. <clears throat> the Prime Minister of Britain at one time made a deal with Adolf Hitler in Germany, saying, peace in our time. He was often full to court, but he remembered the travesty and disaster and pain and suffering of the First War and the millions and millions of losses. And he wished to avoid it. Unfortunately, he did not understand the opposition. And the prophet Jeremiah quotes in his prophecies twice. Peace, peace, there is no peace. But Jesus said something different. He was gathering with his followers in an upper room eventually to face trial and crucifixion and death, said, Peace I leave to you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. These are words I've often remember, have to remember in my own journey at times of my own fear and my own uncertainty, at times of issues, conflicts, indecision, anxiety and fear, that the peace of Jesus, the peace of our faith, when we pass the peace, the shalom, it tells us first that we are not alone. We have a God who watches over us. We have Jesus as a friend who walks with us. We have the breath of the Holy Spirit that comes into us that gives us courage to face what is before us. In the coming weeks, we're ce celebrating a time of thanksgiving in this nation. The remembrance that when the pilgrims came to Massachusetts. They survived the great time of conflict, tragedy, and uncertainty. But they passed through it. They passed over it. In the Jewish tradition, there is Passover, a time that added difficulty, uncertainty, fear, and anxiety. God was with them that they could pass over the situation and leave from bondage in Egypt to a promised land where there was hope and fulfillment in their lives. The pilgrims celebrated likewise a thanksgiving after they survived that first terrible winter by the help and aid of the native population and began their lives together in a new world, in a new place. We all pass through, past times, 
or fear and uncertainty. As many of you may know, I don't like flying airplanes, and I've not flown airplanes in years, but one time I had to fly one recently, the last couple of years. Getting on that plane, there's another choice I already made, but I saw it, peace of mind. I used the serenity prayer as a gift that I've learned from Narayan Holdeber. God grant me the peace, the serenity. God grant me the serenity of the things I cannot control. There are a number of things I cannot control, but I can pass through them and I can pass over them in faith, hope, and love that my God, our God, is there to guide us and lift us over and help us pass through. Thanksgiving literally is a time of passing through and passing over, of overcoming, and to be thankful for that gift received. In that serenity prayer, God grant me the strength to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can. Part of you have peace is to have courage to face the uncertainties, the fears, the anxiety. And as the prayer goes on, living one day at a time, experiencing moments of joy a moment at a time, accepting hardships as pathways to peace. Peace is a response in ourselves to what is happening. We're living now in a time of great uncertainty. Many are anxious about the future of this nation, but that people with clear heads, good faith, healthy minds and spirits can know peace that this too can be passed through and passed over. The tragedy between Israel and Gaza is unbelievable on both sides. The loss now of 10,000 human beings in Gaza because of the warfare, in my mind, is unconscionable. But we have to pray for peace, that reason can be found, understanding can be found, and compassion, care, and concern can be shared between both sides, that they can live together in peace and respect each other's humanity. Part of having peace is not what the world gives, wealth, prestige, fame, peace, the understanding. I am created in God's image. I am a child of God. I am a friend of Christ. And I'm empowered by God's Spirit to guide me and to be with me and to lead me. And as we go into Thanksgiving, do not be afraid. We can give thanks together, even across the airwaves, that we have passed through this time. We have overcome the uncertainty. We have found help and strength and courage. The Holy Spirit is with us to guide us. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. We are people of courage. Even in our uncertainty, fears, and anxieties, we're people of courage. By the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the empowerment of the Spirit, I, myself, have been grateful of the things I have passed through and passed over. God be with you this coming week. God bless you and yours this coming week. And as we join together next Sunday to observe Thanksgiving Sunday, and come to a time of Thanksgiving, that Thursday hence. God is with you. Christ walks with you. The Holy Spirit is within you. Be at peace. 
be at peace as a person of faith, hope, and love. Christ be with you. Amen. As we gather in this moment, as we lift up prayers this day, I invite you to lift up prayers of thanksgiving and peace that the grace of our God, the peace of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit has been with us, to lift up in prayer those we know who need a word of prayer for their care, comfort, and well-being, to pray for this nation in its time of concerns and issues and crises, that there be truly peace here and understanding and compassion and care, to pray for those in Israel and Gaza that peace shall be established there and care and concern shared for each other. And to pray for our own needs in body, mind, and spirit. And to give thanks and thanksgiving that the peace of Christ is with us. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we gather this day on this day of worship, Help us to recall that we are created in your image, each of us, male and female, and that in image of humanity is good, that there is goodness within us, the breath of your spirit that gave us life. As we gather this day, we lift up prayers to you, asking for your well-being in our journey, peace, serenity, care and compassion in our lives and in those we know, care for and love, and indeed with those with whom we may have disagreements. We pray that your peace be with those who are sick of body, mind, or spirit who need a healing hand to touch them, a loving word to lift them, and an empowering breath to help them be healed. Be with this nation this day as it goes through its time of uncertainty, this time of anger in people's lives, of the loss of loved ones who have been hurt by human tragedy. Bring your peace to them. Be with those in Israel and Gaza that may find that they may find peace and well-being, hope, and strength to be a blessing to them that they may live together as one people with our God, you who are our God, this and every day. Gracious God, hear our prayers this day as we prepare for that time of thanksgiving in the coming week, coming weeks. Be our blessing, be our keep. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I invite you now to share with me the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for being with me this day. May God's presence be with you, Christ walk with you, and the Holy Spirit's presence within you.
And I look forward to you joining me on next Sunday as our Thanksgiving Sunday at North Yonkers Communion, at North Yonkers Community Church, as we lift up the good news of Thanksgiving, as we prepare for our Thanksgiving in the coming week. God bless you. God keep you. God be with you. And I invite you now to share with me our benediction for this Sunday. Let us share together. The Lord Almighty is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.